How's it going folks? Flying solo again today. Bianca is down uh, re-upholstering uh, a massage table that she picked up. So we've just taken all the staples out and gotten rid of all the degraded uh, vinyl cover. So anyway, that's what she's up to there. Um, it's getting a little bit dark. It's, it's about 5.30ish, quarter to six. So it's getting a little bit dark outside to do much. But what I thought I'd do is give you an update on as the um, title suggests, our troublesome tractor. Uh, this is a Ford 2110 and it has a plate around here with, turn the light on, uh, it's got a serial number and a plate, all those match. So this plate is for this tractor and that model number says it is a Ford 2110. And they are a four cylinder diesel and they are made by a Japanese company for Ford. Although there is a British variant that I need to look into. All that is important because uh, we have a Ford 2110. This manual covers the two models, the three cylinder 1910 and the 2110. They have slightly different um, chassis and um, gearboxes and all the works. And at the front here, as you can see, we have a nice little flat um, sort of arrow shaped axle assembly and it has a molded or a cast um, a spindle cover there so if you look up here that's what that one there is except it's for a model 1910 because the 2110 has a different axle assembly and the actual, I think it's on the next page. Here we go. That's the 2110. It looks like it's a two part jobby that slides in there. Whereas the 1910 has a, um, looks like a cast spindle cover. Trying to get parts for this is a real trouble at the moment because the guys in the local tractor warehouse said not only could this be a British variant. Um, but I suggested maybe it was cannibalized from different parts. It's a bit of a mongrel and it's um, Yeah, it's been cannibalized from 1910 because they can fit on some 2010 assemblies and They're saying that's probably what's happened because the parts are very hard to get the spindles are okay to get But anything that's for um, forge fabricated and things like that are a little bit harder to get we can still get the steering arms um, this assembly over here, Bianca and I were looking at today, that is welded on. It shouldn't, it should be cast. So this is another reason why we think it may be a bit of a mongrel. They've had to put a different angle on there uh, to take the existing steering arm they had. And the guy we bought it from got it second hand. And the guys they bought it from originally are these guys, Heads Tractor and Services. So it's over 10, 15 years ago. So even if they still exist, I doubt they would have any memory of um, putting this jobby together. So, uh, oh, the other thing is um, this doesn't fit correctly. We have a feeling that there could be an issue um, here with this being stripped, but I think I may have mentioned that earlier. Um, and the guy said that, that shouldn't be a problem. If they can get the correct arm for this, it'll have the right grooves to match the spindle at the top. So what we need to do is disassemble this, um, jack this up, drop the spindle out and take it in and they can go against the measurements of that spindle to work out what model it is and it might be a case of we might have to either fabricate our own one of these or yeah, work out something else. So that's the go with that. As for the filter, um, the steering filter, which is the steering, oh sorry, the power steering filter is this little jobby here. That's the pipe that takes it up to the power steering pump and inside this round container is um, a little stainless steel um, mesh. It's a, probably a fairly large micron uh, mesh strainer filter uh, just to take any debris out. And then the hydraulic fluid comes up here and yeah, that's the um, power steering pump. So Craig did suggest that we may have some gunk in there as well that's causing issues. But we'll just see what the condition the filter is in first. So this is where we're up to with the tractor. Um, we need to get that off to match it up. 
but we're not overly concerned because we can steer the tractor and we can drive it um, with those dodgy parts on it. So what we do need to do though is buy a hydraulic filter, oil filter, because if we're going to drop the oil and do everything we might as well get a new filter and at the same time we're going to get a new engine oil filter as well and a new fuel filter. So um, it is definitely a bit of a uh, project tractor. Well, I know we can get those replacements because they're just a generic across a lot of different models. That may be an issue, so I might just leave that. Um, but yeah, uh, we definitely need to fix the, um, the power steering strainer and then we should be right to go. But anyway, that's where we're up to. Oh, the other thing we've done is um, we've blown this out with air and put some of the, um, the penetrating oil in there, trying to get this to go down. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. I'm going to give it another spray tomorrow before we hop in the car and take mum down to Ipswich and then come home Saturday. So yeah, that's um, pretty much all what's going over there. A whirlwind trip to drop mum off and catch up with a friend uh, before we come back up again. So just a quick update on both the tractor and the jack. But first to the jack. We may have narrowed this down. A lot of folks thought it could have been an old vintage walker jack from around about the 30s. Uh, US made one uh, looked like very similar, but they don't have this little release mechanism on them So I'm thinking that it could be an Aussie made APAC. I think I'm fairly sure they're Aussie made. They're definitely Aussie sold APAC um, High lift truck jack or high lift trolley truck jack There is a few things that I, on it that make it very hard to identify and I think that's because my father probably um, rescued this one from a um, scrap bin and has remade it. Uh, all the release mechanisms on the APAC ones I've seen are down the bottom here and where the lift arm attaches is actually on a side that is built up on a bit of a slope and then goes down and there's also a cover over the top of the mechanism here now uh, Brian a supporter in today's hangout G'day Brian thank you very much to everyone who came along Craftily, Recycles, Dave, Brian and Michael P thank you very much folks always love hanging out with you guys um, yeah Brian pointed out that dad's probably taken the cover off because there's two separate different types of metal on these little rails here and I dare say that dad has added them back on there's a bit of a world job there and there's a treadle piece missing here because I'm sure there was like a four footed treadle piece off the side so I'll be keeping an eye out for that when I go and clean out dad's place see if we can find it but yeah it, we're, we're thinking it could be an APAC jack so if anyone can help um, the reason why I want information on this is because I want to uh, repair it so it is something that we can use and because yeah it will definitely come in handy lifting up the front end of tractors and the rear ends and things like that so anyone who can help us here in Australia really appreciate it or anywhere else where Apex are available now on to the tractor Bianca and I headed south and dropped off mum and we missed our window of opportunity to see a tractor wreckers I thought they were closer to Ipswich than what they were they're actually at the foot of the hill uh, before Toowoomba um, so yeah, we, we didn't get out to the tractor wreckers, already ordered the filters for the hydraulic and the oil, uh, just the engine oil filters, and those two there, those white jobbies, and the fuel, fuel filter, I'm fairly sure the old owner said that he'd actually swapped that over very recently, probably with these guys as well, but if we've got um, hydraulic issues, I do think we need to um, replace the hydraulic oil. Yeah, that's where we stand with this. Back to Rob a few days ago. Oh, I'll show you a few other bits and pieces we've been up to. Out the back of the shed here, I did a whole heap of line trimming. Oh, hello, guinea fowl. I did a whole heap of line trimming because we've seen a couple of red bellies around. So we want to keep the grass nice and low where we and Jack walk around. So yeah, it wasn't overly tall, probably about, oh, tufts like that in there, probably about half a foot tall with some of the lower lying weeds. But yeah, I just did all this area here and down around the chicken coop. So that's all nice and clear around the rainwater tank because the chickens spend a lot of time there. And just around here where we come out the back to blow out stuff and bits and pieces like that. I also did the rest of the um, area in front of the small shed where Bee was working as well. And some of the guinea fowl are already up and roosting. Uh, we'll give you a quick look at uh, Bianca's bookshelf. 
And while I'm down there, I'll grab something that an awesome supporter sent us. What are you doing? Unpacking my bookcase. Unpacking a bookcase. So that's the finished bookcase. Yep. And I'll turn the light on for this so you can see a bit better. Turned out really good. There's a couple of like lighter brown areas you can see there, but I yeah, think that really it. adds to it. I think it adds to it. Yeah, it's probably a little bit darker than what I wanted, but oh well, less than that. Yeah. So I still like it. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm Onto off to show off the other thing. Sorry? Yeah. And on to project number two. Oh yeah, I've already mentioned that you're doing the um, the massage yeah. table. Yeah. I'll give a quick look at that. So we're not recording this one, um, yeah. but in that bag is a whole heap of flaky, fluffy, Ooh. decomposing it's vinyl. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So, and we stripped that off, and Bianca's got the legs just to, just around the corner there. And the phone. Phone's still good. Phone's still good. So a very light ply. Yep. But um, yeah, B's got some um, proper vinyl covering, thick stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where is it? There we go. Down there, black stuff. The and there's the headrest. It needs to be redone. Yeah. Um, but I'm off to um, do this now. Show the folks that. Okay. Bye. Bye. So what we got from Mark was something that we've mentioned in a video. Um, I'm fairly sure he commented on it and pointed us in the right direction um, and told us about this company here. Where are we? Spark Metal Designs, you can read upside down hopefully. There's basically a star picker puller. I think there are T-Post versions in the States. So it just slots on down like that. You put it down there or as low as you can get it. You whack this onto your bucket or your um, high lift jack if you want to complicate it. Or the uh, three point hitch of your tractor and you just lift it out. And if you need to, you just slacken it off, it slides down again and you can just lift again. So this is absolutely awesome. It came out of the blue. He sent me an email and said, oh, Rob, I've lost your mailing address because we've um, conversed over the years. And um, yeah, I gave him the new mailing address and this turned up yesterday. So this is absolutely awesome. I'm very appreciative of this. I did offer him um, some free months membership in uh, the groups, but he politely declined. So I'm not too sure if he's a member of the... Um, farm your own yard but if you are mate we really do appreciate this B and I were blown away what are you doing Jackie boy are you sniffing up guinea fowl poo or a fox 10 bucks is guinea fowl poo so I think now I've got Jack here instead of running off down the paddock we shall go back to the house and I'll wrap it up with you folks uh, actually I might put the chickens away first I do hope uh, you have an absolutely awesome week, what's left of it, two, three days. And we will catch you hopefully on the weekend. Bianca and I are thinking about doing a video on the um, the tractor and what's going on with it for the main channel too. We have four birds. Chook Chook is on the nest, but she's not looking clucky. She's looking a little bit too active, so she might be laying a goog. We've come out the last couple of mornings and there's been one there after they've been put away, so... I dare say that's what she's doing, but anyway, all birds are accounted for. I need two hands to lock it up, so I will say see you later, folks. Thank you very much. Rob from the future again. I do hope you did have a fantastic weekend. It's uh, Sunday evening here. I just thought I'd add this little bit on so I can upload it to YouTube for everyone to suss out. Thank you very much to all the supporters who did come along today, had a ball as, all, as always, and thank you to everyone who does support the channel. Had a few people um, point out that I'm not doing aquaponics anymore. Well, um, yeah, there might be something coming very soon, it was as discussed on the Supporter Hangout. If you are a YouTube member, you can catch up with that over on the YouTube membership tab on my channel. I'm fairly sure the live stream today was recorded and you can watch it there, see what it's all about if you want to come along in the future. So Bianca's just going to start making some kimchi and I better go in and help peel some garlic. So I do hope you all have a fantastic week and hopefully we'll both catch you next weekend. Cheers all, have a top one.